and welcome to a slightly different episode of Battlefield 4 News because as you can see it's over the top of some gameplay footage and this is gameplay from the latest patch on the CTE server and the reason it's here is because initiative 1 of the CTE testing which was the net code is pretty much finished and we know now that a lot of what has been done in CTE is about to hit the live servers in a patch and details of exactly what is to come in the live is available on the CTE forums so I thought I'd go through it and rather than just have a load of text and 10-15 minutes of discussion I thought right I might as well put some CTE gameplay in the background and that will make it a bit more interesting now this gameplay is from a single round it has been shortened so things like the deploy screens have been removed and a bunch of chat we were doing about the SRAW. Now there's no documented changes to the SRAW in the CT patch notes but I've definitely noticed some. Um, one of which is it takes longer to deploy now it seems. It doesn't go straight to your shoulder and fire there seems to be a delay now. And the other change is that the missile seems to carry on going once you're dead. Now the SRAW used to pretty much just vanish if you died. But now it will carry on and hit its target. And there's an example of that in this gameplay so that's another reason why it's here. But rather than just list off the changes that are going to come to the live servers, I thought I'd explain them a little bit as we've been playing them on the CTE for a few weeks now and we have a better idea of what it actually means in terms of the game. Firstly let's take a look at what's appeared in patch 5 of this initiative 1. There's now a separate button for you to engage a rear view camera when you're in the jet so essentially you can now press a button and look behind you. The Russian stealth jet has had its ECM effect fixed so it now lines up better with when the ECM is actually being deployed and there's improvements to the uniform soldier aiming. Now if you don't know what uniform soldier aiming is then it's simply the ability to adjust your mouse sensitivity based on the field of view of the scope you're looking through. So if you're looking down your iron sights then currently you have one mouse sensitivity and if you're looking down a scope you've got another. What this lets you do is set your sensitivity based on what magnification the scope is or you can turn it off and have every iron sight and every scope using the same mouse sensitivity. It basically lets your sensitivity options be a bit more flexible and it lets you adjust how sensitive you want it to be when using a really powerful scope. So that's the final patch of initiative 1. Now that doesn't mean that they've stopped looking at the netcode doing improvements and fixes for it. What it means is that they've got enough information from the CTE test servers to do those changes. So they will probably come back to the CTE servers and test them again. This first stage of netcode improvements that's going to be coming to the live system is a series of client options that you can turn on or off. What they want to do is make that system automatic and handled by the client itself. So there won't be the options for you to fiddle with. The client will just automatically adjust to what the current client server situation is. So how do I know what's coming to the live system? Well on the CTE blog there is a post about patch 5 and it also mentions patch slash next release. The next release of the retail game will include a bulk of the changes and fixes made on the CTE. We think this collection of changes to the game, which were tested through the CTE, is significant enough to warrant its own release as early as possible. And then there's a list of the included features and future features that will come in a later patch. So, let's have a look at this list of included features. Now I would say this is the list for the PC and we won't know what's coming to consoles until they release the patch notes for each console. 
the first thing is fix for explosion packs not being shootable sometimes. So this is C4 and claymores, slams and anti-tank mines. Most people have had the situation where you've got an indestructible slam or anti-tank mine in front of your tank and you can fire round after round at it and it just will not blow up. That is now fixed. Fix for reducing damage mismatch between client and server. So this is essentially monitoring your health and how much damage you're taking. One of the reasons we got so many kill trades and kills from people on zero health was that the server and client weren't aligned as to how much damage you've taken. So the client could think you were perfectly fine and on 20 health, but the server was thinking you're on zero health or the other way around. What they've done now is made it so that the client and server are much more aligned as to what your current damage status is. Next is a fix for the third person player orientation mismatch. Now I'm not exactly sure what this is because I very rarely go into third person view. But what I believe it is, is that sometimes when you switched over into first person, you got a different position and rotation to what you had when you were in first person. So essentially you weren't looking in the same direction at the same things. Next we have a fix for character collision improvements. So we've probably all experienced it on spawning that you're running alongside a bunch of other players and you're literally jerking from side to side as you're clipping through their character model what happens now is you're more likely to bounce off them rather than try and go through them and this is the same for enemy players as well so if you run around a corner you don't literally run through the enemy at times and when you're trying to knife them you won't knife through them because your knife animation is happening behind them so essentially the character models are a bit more detailed as to where their physical boundaries are and how they should interact. Next we have improvements to client side packet loss. Now this is trying to make the client more robust if it isn't receiving information from the server as regular as it should. Now this improved handling has had to be put in because of the improvements they're making to the tick rate. A small loss of packets means that it's going to be losing more information because the client and server are sending more information. Now there's no information as to exactly what they've changed but what we've seen on the CTE servers is that client seems to run more smoothly even when there's packet loss and you don't get the massive leaps forward and the massive rubber banding that we were getting on the live game. The next three improvements are all under the title high frequency bubble and this is the biggest change that is coming to the netcode. So the high frequency bubble is the server to client tick rate improvement. Essentially what it does is it raises the tick rate to 30 Hertz, but only in certain situations and only for certain objects in the world. So it includes damage, character position, character rotation, projectiles in the air, stances, vehicles and infantry. So all of those from now on will be running at 30 Hertz rather than 10 Hertz. Now the server is still running at 10 Hertz. So all the things like where trees are, revolution elements, explosions, that kind of thing are all going on and talking to each other at 10 Hertz. But the characters are effectively running at 30 Hertz. So everything you do, like shooting, taking damage, turning, running, all that is updated now at a faster rate. So when you fire at another character, your information goes to the server three times faster. And the results to the other character get to him three times faster from the server as well. So what you get is a smoother gameplay experience and you get a more accurate map of the world in effect. So all the clients are updated more frequently 
as to the status of you and the enemies around you. Now this is handled through a new option in the client menus and this allows you to set the frequency of server to client updates. By default it's off and that's running at the standard 10 Hertz but then you can set it to low, medium or high. High of course is going to need a better internet connection and a faster PC to run. So if you're running at 30 Hertz you're going to need a better internet connection than if you're running at 10 Hertz. And this is what DICE want to be able to set automatically in the future. Currently you have to set it manually and it doesn't exactly say what low and medium are but we know that high is 30 Hertz because that's the maximum setting you can have. There is an option for the servers to turn all this off. So if the server notices that its connection is bad, so the connection between the server and the internet is a bit ropey, what it will do is turn all of this off and go back to 10 hertz. By doing that, it will reduce the load on the server, reduce the amount of internet traffic the server's having to do, and therefore smooth out the gameplay for everyone. So that is the major change to the netcode. Now, it isn't a perfect change by any means. You don't get one shot killed, you don't get you know, those laggy behind corner kills, but what you do find is you die a lot faster because every bullet is now counting and every millisecond is now counting. So whereas before you could get into a gunfight and you'd both die and kill trade, now it doesn't. That first burst will take you down. There'll be no missing damage. It is a lot faster to die. And literally, you take a burst and you're dead. It's not that slight delay that you used to get before. So it's going to take a bit of getting used to. At first, it feels like you're getting instantly killed. But after a while you realise, no, you're just getting killed at the rate you should have been killed before. The next item is dampening explosive camera shake. So this is the amount of screen shake you get from explosions happening nearby. It doesn't remove it completely, you're still going to get screen shake if a grenade goes off near you or if a tank fires a shell at you. But it's not going to be as massive as it was before. It's still pretty tricky to aim through and you're not going to be as accurate as you are without it but it's not as excessive and experience ruining as it was before. Before if you were getting grenades spammed your camera was just jumping all over the place and you didn't have a chance of hitting anything. Now your camera wobbles around rather than jumping around. So the next item is another one of these technical background ones. They've reduced the frame history time by 33%. So what has actually happened is the frame history time has been reduced from 1.5 seconds to 1 second. Now the description they give for this is this value is used to determine how much slack the server allows a client with packet loss to have. With this number lowered to match the 30Hz server send frequency, we should have less deaths behind cover. So, if you're suffering from packet loss and have been shooting another player for a couple of seconds, originally the server will let you catch up by a second and a half. Now it's only letting you catch up by a second. So one second of that shooting will now not be interpreted by the server. So this is probably going to lead to a worse experience if you're suffering from packet loss. You will shoot at people and nothing will happen. But if you're on the game and running fine, people who are suffering from packet loss will not be able to shoot you around corners anymore. Because the server just won't let them catch up that much. And as usual for one of these patch notes we have various server side network improvements and fixes at the end. Now I'll quickly go through the list of things that are coming in later patches 
but we'll go into those in detail when they're actually coming. So we've got chat delay fixes, exploit fixes for Hainan Resort and Metro, we've got the obliteration competitive mode, we have stability fixes, the high altitude jet damage is being fixed, changing the way FOV sliders work, adding the uniform soldier aiming and they're going to be sorting out some of the ragdoll physics. So all those will be coming up in future patches, not the next one. So what is this first patch going to mean for the live game? Well, I can tell you the difference between CTE and live, and it's the speed at which things happen. You kill faster and you're killed faster. It's just a much sharper, crisper game. Now, on PC this isn't that much of an issue, but on console I'm not quite sure how this advanced tick rate is going to work whether the game is just going to feel way too snappy and reactive for playing it with a controller. But playing it on PC, it does take a while to get used to. It is a different game, it's... I don't know what to compare it to really, because Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 had a very similar feeling. This is kind of Battlefield 4, but ramped up a bit. Things seem to happen more instantaneously. When you're shooting at somebody the hit markers are there while you're still shooting they don't appear slightly later. When you fire a burst at somebody and you see them drop you can realize oh yeah all of those bullets hit rather than trying to work out why you didn't necessarily kill somebody when you fired a full burst into them. It's a much crisper game and for a mediocre player like me I don't think it's made that much difference I think I probably average out the advantage to disadvantage I get from it so yes I kill people quicker yes I get killed quicker but on average for me it balances out I think the really good players are going to get a massive advantage from this because the people who can really quickly turn fire and get headshots in this new version of the game they're really going to get an advantage because your time to turn and fire back seems to be greatly reduced. I don't think it actually is, I think it's just that because the game kills you maybe a second faster than it did before. You take the damage the system knows you've taken the damage and you're dead. There's not that sort of fuzzy little delay you got before. So the guy who's better is going to do better. It's as simple as that. There's going to be a lot less kill trading. There's going to be a lot more. Wow, that guy killed me quick. But by far the biggest thing you notice on the CTE servers, and hopefully this will come to live servers with the patch, is that you're not being killed by the netcode and the game anymore, you're getting killed by the other players, either just because they're better than you or because they got the drop on you. You don't feel cheated by the game when you die. There's been no announcement as to when this patch is coming to the live game, but when we do get some kind of announcement, I'll let you know and do a bit of testing to see what it's like. Thanks for watching.